let's begin with one of the very interesting topics and that's understanding the diversity around us now this diversity could be in terms of size where i could say there is a small bacteria which is microscopic in nature on the other extreme you have whale which is so huge this extremity could be in the kind of duration of life cycle where i could say a mosquito lives for just few days on the other hand you have elephant that lives for years so what happens is we are trying to understand or categorize different organisms under different heads now this process of categorization indeed is a tedious job unless and until we have certain common characteristics with us based on which we can group certain things under different categories and this makes the process much more simpler much more systematic also whenever we classify we start with a bigger group at a go and slowly and gradually we taper down so we have kingdoms which is considered as the biggest group and we have the most acceptable uh, five kingdom classification propounded by whitaker that talks about the five kingdoms now these kingdoms which could be further classified under family class genus and finally species so what we are trying to do is we are trying to arrange or uh, into hierarchical order to understand those in much further detail but before all this began you had aristotle who talked about classifying this onto a simple basis where he said organisms could either live on land in water or in air so that was a very simple classification that was done but later on based on the form the size the functions performed they started to classify this in a much more comprehensive form and the five kingdom classification the most popular classification that we talk about have three fundamental bases for it the first one talks about whether it is a eukaryote or a prokaryote that means whether it has a well defined nucleus or not a well defined nucleus the second important criteria is whether it is single cellular it just has one cell or there are multiple cells with specialized functions that are part of it the third important criteria is whether they can produce their own foods they, they are autotroph in nature or they are dependent on others and they are heterotrophs in nature based on these three different criteria we have the five kingdom classification this five kingdom classification which talks about monera protista fungi plants and animal kingdom has further subdivisions for each of those right now we would be focusing on the broad five kingdom classification now similar to building a house what happens is you have bigger stones at the bottom and slowly and gradually you can put smaller stones and that would make the building much more stable and that goes with your classification when you begin with a bigger kingdom at a base you would have the smaller genus and species that could be much stable within the kingdom this whole process involves complexities so the earlier organisms the primitive organisms or what we call as lower order organisms were much more simpler in nature slowly and gradually with civilization which develop with development you have more complexities that came in and you had advanced and higher order organisms that were part of it this whole organisms or the ecosystem around us has more than 10 million species but we as human beings have been able to find only 1 to 2 million species based on which we have the classifications that we would be discussing today so you had heckel whitaker woos who classified these under different categories whitaker classification that we would be discussing as now is the most popular and then you had voice classification who further classified these moneras under archibacteria and eubacteria so let's first focus on the five kingdom classification so you have first of all monera protista then you have fungi plant and animal now of these only moneras are those which are prokaryotic the rest of the four are eukaryotic that means they have well differentiated nucleus that is present of all these five monera and protista are those which are unicellular 
द रेस्ट ऑफ दोज आर मल्टी सेलुलर सो अगेन फर्दर क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ दीज मल्टी सेलुलर ओनली टू ऑफ दोज फंगाई एंड द प्लांट्स हैव सेल वॉल एनिमल्स डू नॉट हैव सेल वॉल देन we have the further differentiations that we would understand in detail but this is a very broader outlook of what we are trying to understand so monera as i said it's unicellular so single cell no multicellular structure seen it could it may or may not have cell wall it can prepare its own food or it could be dependent on others so it could be autotroph or it could be heterotroph but it is prokaryotic that means it does not have well defined nucleus and no well defined cell structure that is seen bacteria blue green algae uh, mycoplasma are good examples of it the next is protistas protistas you have unicellular but they are eukaryotes that means they have well defined nucleus they also have have cilia or flagella for movement for example paramecium would have cilia for movement usually na would have flagella for movement similarly you have amoeba which would have pseudopodia or false legs for movement again these protistas can be heterotrophs they can be autotrophs they may or may not be able to produce their own food but they are eukaryotes they have well defined nucleus the next is fungi fungi is dependent on others so they do not manufacture their own food so they are heterotrophs by all means and they depend on the host organisms so they are actually parasitic in nature but similar to plants they have cell wall the cell wall of fungi is very unique because it is made up of sugary carbohydrates and this is chitin which is tough a very good example of fungus is the bread bread mold if you leave a moist bread for few days you would see small green growth on it and that is where you have the molds so molds yeast mushrooms are all examples of fungi fungi have very good symbiotic relations with algae where both of them mutually benefit and you have lichens which are seen which are indicator of pollution so in the regions of metropolitans you won't find lichens because there is lot of sulfur however if you go on to might be the rainforest of amazons uh, you would see a lot of lichens that would be there so definitely plan a visit the next is understanding the difference between fungi and the plant kingdom so fung fungi have cell wall but they are heterotrophs they are saprophytic they consume the decaying organic material however plants are autotrophs they produce their own food and they have a cell wall they are also multicellular eukaryotes so beyond monera and protistas you have all those are multicellular in nature so fungi plant and animal kingdom all of those are multicellular now again when we further try to sub classify plant kingdom later we would understand at the very broad level we start with differentiated organs this could be root stem leaves then we start with water conduction uh, that is through vascular bundles xylem and phloem we move forward with presence of seeds presence of fruits so that's how we further sub classify plant kingdom coming on to animal kingdom the major difference between plant and animal kingdom is both are multicellular both are eukaryotic plant cells have cell wall animal cells do not have cell wall similarly plant cells are autotrophs animal cells are heterotrophs that means they are dependent on the plants so plant kingdom and animal kingdom when we are trying to understand the two major differences presence or absence of cell wall and the food manufacturing whether it's by themselves or they are dependent on others so under animal kingdom we have no cell wall that is present which we have covered in detail in our previous lectures on the cell structure so you can refer the video on cell structure in detail and then they are heterotrophs that means they do not produce their own food they are dependent on plants for the food plant classification we will begin with a very simple understanding first of all we classify plants based on whether the structure is well differentiated or not followed by having distinct parts with 
स्पेशल टिश्यूज लाइक जायलम एंड फ्लोएम एंड फाइनली देर केपेबिलिटी टू बियर सीड्स और फ्रूट्स सो बेस्ड ऑन दिस वी हैव द प्लांट क्लासिफिकेशन बट बिफोर वी बिगिन विद प्लांट क्लासिफिकेशन अ क्विक रिकैप ऑफ वॉट इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ प्लांट क्लासिफिकेशन एंड एन एनिमल क्लासिफिकेशन तो प्लांट्स वुड हैव सेल वॉल दैट वुड बी प्रेजेंट सेल वॉल वुड बी एबसेंट इन एनिमल्स plants would be autotrophs they would be able to prepare their own food in presence of sunlight and this would happen by the process of photosynthesis these plants are multicellular eukaryotes similar to animals which are again multicellular and eukaryotes that means they have well defined nucleus coming on to the classification we classify plants again under five different heads those are thallophytes bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms thallophytes are one which are not well differentiated they do not have well differentiated plant parts that are seen under bryophytes you would have stem and leaf that would be differentiated but there would be absence of any xylem or phloem so no xylem and phloem would be present in bryophytes however when we talk about pteridophytes pteridophytes would have roots stems and leaves that would be present there would be presence of vascular system from bryophytes onwards so all of these bryophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms would have xylem and phloem so xylem and phloem would be present in all of those these pteridophytes are also known as cryptograms because they have hidden seeds the seeds are uh, they do not produce seeds and therefore they are known as cryptograms gymnosperms and angiosperms would be classified based on the seeds both of them have the capability to produce seeds and therefore they are known as phanerograms phanerogams basically have the capability to produce seeds but for gymnosperms these are considered as exposed they are open seeds and therefore we call those as gymno gymno the word means naked and therefore they have naked seeds on the other hand angiosperms have seeds inside the fruits so within the fruits you would have the seeds and these angiosperms can again be uh, classified as monocots or dicots dicots are those which have two different cotyledons p gram are good examples coming on to detailed understanding of each of these again so thallophytes as we said they do not have any well differentiated organs algae are common examples of these they are mainly aquatic they are found mainly in water spirogera and the list here is there which are examples of thallophyte the next is bryophytes bryophytes are known as amphibians of plant kingdom as we said they have well differentiated stems they have well differentiated leaves but nothing said about roots so far well differentiated roots stems and leaves start from pteridophyte so bryophytes do not have specialized cell for conduction of water no xylem phloem present moss rickia are good examples of it pteridophytes as we said have well differentiated leaves stems and roots along with xylem and phloem which are the specialized cells for conduction of water and nutrients the reproductive organs are inconspicuous inconspicuous that means most of those are not visible so you do not have seeds and therefore they are called as cryptogams cryptogams are also bryophytes and thallophytes are also cryptogams because they do not produce seeds but here is where you have the end of cryptogams and then you have gymnosperms and angiosperms which have the capability to produce seeds and therefore are categorized under phanerograms now the seed production process occurs through sexual reproduction there is embryo which stores the fruit and that helps in the initial growth now with the cotyledons you have the seed leaves and from these seed leaves you have a new seed that germinates and this is where you have the process of germination that occurs gymnosperm as the name suggests you have naked seeds gymno means naked sperm means seed so these are the exposed seeds on the surface are usually seen in evergreen perennial plants which are usually woody pine devdar are good examples 
Angiosperms on the other hand angio means covered so the seeds are covered within the fruits and flowering plants so you have seeds that are formed from the ovules and fruit formed from the ovary which we have understood in our basic lectures on the flowering these angiosperms are further classified as monocots and dicots dicots are those which have two cotyledons as we already said p and gram are good examples for those animal classification is further more interesting than plant classification before we begin with the classification the highlights of animal kingdom again so they are multicellular they are eukaryotes that means they have a well differentiated nucleus they depend on food for onto the plants that means they are heterotroph or to some other organism that means they cannot produce their food by themselves and the most important difference from plant cell is the cell wall is absent cell wall is present in plants because they are non motile they cannot move from one place to another in order to protect them bet better you have cell wall that is present there is no such cell wall in animals coming on to the classification of animal cell we can begin our classification by categorizing animal kingdom Uh, animal kingdom into two categories one is the cellular level of uh, organ differentiation the next is the tissue level of organ differentiation under the cellular level of organ differenti differentiation you have porifera now the most interesting characteristics about porifera they are non motile they are fixed mostly marine and a good example would be the sponges they are attached to the ground or to the base in the water surface the outermost covering is made up of skeleton coming on to the tissue level of organization now under the tissue level of organization you have three important categories that are there the first important category is where we say you have no cavity which is present between the epidermis and gastrodermis the good example for the first categorization that we have talked about is coelenterate and platyhelminthesis so you have coelenterate and platyhelminthesis a very interesting thing is all the organisms beyond platyhelminthesis that we would see are triploblastic in nature and they are bilaterally symmetrical that means if we cut that organism from between the two sides would exactly overlap unless and until there is some abnormality but in most of the cases 99.9% cases you would have a bilaterally symmetry that is they would simply overlap if a organism is cut vertically from between the next is triploblastic that means they have three layers which is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm that is present so all organisms beyond platyhelminthesis the higher order organisms would be triploblastic would have bilateral symmetry before that we talk about coelenterate so under coelenterate you have those organisms that are present in water they have cavity they can either live alone or in groups or colonies what we call as coral is a good example which live in colony hydra is a good example that lives alone beyond that you also have jellyfish sea anemone which are examples of coelenterate platyhelminthesis are the organisms which are flattened dorso ventrally for example flatworm a very good example now flatworm these flatworms or those which are platyhelminthesis could be parasitic in nature uh, liver fluke is a good example these platyhelminthesis or those which are flattened dorso ventrally are present in the intestine they are present in the liver so planaria liver flukes are good example to explain platyhelminthesis the next is those which are pseudocoelom now those which have pseudocoelom pseudo means false now those which have false cavity a good example is nematode now these nematodes are again as we already said triploblastic they are bilaterally symmetrical they are cylindrical now when we say they are cylindrical a good example that comes to mind is roundworm beyond roundworm we also have pinworms that are same 
The next classification is silomate. Now, these silomate that have silome that is present. Now, these silomate can be further classified into, into two categories where first of all, we say you have mesoderm arising from a single cell of the embryo. So, those which are formations of mesoderm and those where you have cavity being pinched into the endoderm that is seen. So, two different categories that we have under coelomate. Now, coming on to the mesoderm. This mesoderm where you have mesoderm uh, cells formed from a single celled embryo. Now, <coughs> this mesoderm can be further classified into three. Those are enolid, arthropoda and mollusk. Now, let's talk about these one by one. Enolid are those which are again triploblastic as we already said. They are bilaterally symmetrical. They have a true body cavity. Now, all those which are part of silomate would have true body cavity. So, everything beyond enolid would have a true body cavity. Very, very clear. Now, this enolid which has true body cavity does also has organ differentiation because they are part of tissues. So, tissue level since we are talking about that level of differentiation, here you would have organ differentiation that would be seen and the body is segmental from top to bottom. That means a good example is earthworm. You have segments that are present. Leech that is again segmental from top to bottom. Coming on to the next is arthropoda. Arthropoda is the largest group. So, becomes very, very important automatically. They have jointed legs. The body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. So, six pairs, uh, six pairs of legs, uh, three pairs of legs, that is six legs that are seen. The next important thing is they have an open circulatory system. Again, very, very important. The circulatory system in case of arthropoda is op open. Butterflies, insects, mosquitoes are all examples of arthropoda. Again, they are triploblastic. They are bilaterally symmetrical. The next is mollusk. Again, triploblastic, bilaterally symmetrical. So, there are some points that you could directly start beyond platyhelminthesis. And that's very, very simple to remember. So, this mollusk, which is triploblastic, bilaterally symmetrical, has very little segmentation that is seen. So, the segmentation here is very little. You have a reduced silomic cavity that is seen. And uh, you have... Kidney-like structures which are mainly seen for excretion and also open circulatory system which is found beyond arthropoda in mollusk as well. The next important thing is uh, the examples are uh, mollusks. So, you have snails, musils as some of the good examples. So, snail, musil are some of the good examples and they also have foot-like movement that is found. Coming on to those which have endoderm. Now, where the cavity is pinched as endoderm, we can further classify those as those which do not have notochord. So, no notochord and where you have notochord which is present. When I say no notochord, what does this mean? No notochord means a good example is echinodermata. So, echinodermata, again, when we are talking about echino, echino means spiny skin. So, the skin is spiny. You have free living marine organisms that are found. So, they are mostly seen in water. Uh, made up of calcium carbonate. Good examples are starfish, sea urchin. So, sea urchin, starfish are good examples of echinodermata. Coming on to those which have notochord, we can further classify these as those which have notochord only during the rudimentary stage or the larva stage. And this is who, which are known as protochordata. And then you have chordata. So, differentiating these two, when we say those which have notochord in the larval stage, which is protochordata, again they are triploblastic in nature, they are bilaterally symmetrical in nature. Marine organisms are example of these. So, you have herd mania 
and amphioxus which is example of protocordata in case of chordata what is very very important the notochord is replaced by a vertebral column and this is where we also call these as vertebrates so what are the characteristics of these vertebrates is very very important first of all they are coelomate as we are seeing the classification begins with coelomate so that becomes your first point they are coelomate the second is they are triploblastic again we know they have bilateral symmetry again we know they have notochord that is present they have a dorsal nerve cord that is seen and they also have paired gill pouches now these vertebra can again be further subclassified so i'll move with the classification of vertebrates separately so these vertebrates could be ca categorized into six different uh, categories so you have the first category which is cyclostomata cyclostomata are those which are known as jawless so they are jawless elongated eel they have circular mouth that is present uh, scales are absent so they are scaleless we could say lamprey is a good example you have hagfish as another example for cyclostomata the next in line is pisces now pisces are the classification for fishes they can be either cartilaginous for example shark they can be bony so tuna rohu are good examples of fish uh, fishes they are aquatic in nature they have gills that are present the body is streamlined they are cold blooded now a very important thing is they can adjust the body temperature however warm blooded cannot adjust the body temperature so under these categories after pisces you have amphibians then you have the reptiles and finally the apes and mammals now when we are talking about the cold blooded and warm blooded very very important apes and mammals are warm blooded a very good way to understand this is you have migratory birds but you have not heard of migratory uh, cyclostomata might be the reason being these are the higher order organisms which are much more complex and they do not have a capability to change their body temperature if the birds were capable of changing their body temperature they would remain in arctic and an arctic tern would not fly during the winter months from arctic so migratory birds are one of the reasons because they are warm blooded in nature now coming back to cold blooded where we were so pisces are the ones which are cold blooded they have two chambered heart so two chambered heart is seen in fishes coming on to amphibians uh, amphibians lack scales so no scales are seen in case of amphibians uh, amphibians are interesting because in the larva stage they have gills and in the adult stage they have lungs that are seen they have a uh, very very important characteristic where we are focusing on uh, the uh, organisms that live both on water as well as land now amphibians and reptiles have three chambered heart okay so uh, just a correction here amphibians and reptiles have three chambered heart however under reptiles there is an exception of crocodile crocodile is the only reptile which has four chambered heart and beyond that all the apes and mammals have four chambered heart okay so four chambered heart is another criteria that we understand here coming back to reptiles uh, you have those which lay egg outside the water so all reptiles lay egg outside water apes are the birds now birds lay eggs they have feathers they have a capability to fly so they have uh, hollow bones that are seen also you have four limbs that are modified so you have modification of limbs that are seen coming on to mammals as we said 
they are warm blooded with four chambered hearts they do have mammary glands uh, here is present you have sweat glands that is present then you have uh, the lungs that are present these mammals good ex exceptions are there so one of the exceptions is platypus platypus and echidna both of them lay egg so these are what are known as monotremes then you also have certain mammals like kangaroo which have very weak young ones and that is the reason they keep their young ones in pouches so this is another interesting classification that we have talked about so animal classification a quick recap of that you have cellular level uh, classification where porifera is there tissue level with no cavity between epidermis and gastrodermis good example is coelenterate and platyhelminthesis pseudocoelomes where you have nematode and roundworm as an example coelomate where you have mesoderm those which have endoderm mesoderms have annelid mollusk and arthropoda uh, endoderms have either no notochord as in the case of echinodermata or have primitive notochord in the larval stage and in the later stage it is gone for example protochordata and then you have vertebrate or chordata where they have the vertebral column these have been further subdivided into six cyclic Stomata, pisces, amphibia, reptiles, apes, and mammalia. So here we have the complete animal kingdom classification. We will be covering many more interesting topics in the next coming lectures. If you have any doubts, feel free to post those as comment below. Have a wonderful evening.